<laughs> I, hey, everybody. I, he tried to get away. I, We're back with our friend, <laughs> Ben Affleck. Ben, yes. now listen, before you scurry away, mm -hmm. this is the 20th anniversary of Goodwill Hunting this year. Yeah. And extraordinary movie. Extraordinary movie. I was completely blown away. As, you know, I was a younger performer than I was. Sure, sure. I remember watching it and knowing you guys were like, were in it and you know and 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 written it and and you produced on it also we, yeah de, de facto de facto okay like that I'm like I'm not working hard enough these guys <laughs> did all of this themselves did you, you you how long did you work on that film years I mean we we wrote it for it took us about four years to write and then uh, you know we, we rewrote it and rewrote it and then we had it in development and no one would make it and we shopped it around and finally we got uh, somebody to to make the movie. And did you, you, you always wrote it with yourself in mind, right? Like, this Matt, is going to be our Damon vehicle. and I, yeah. The idea wasn't yeah. really to express ourselves as writers. It was to write something that we would look cool in as actors so we could get acting work. Oh, good. Basically. So ego first. Absolutely. Ego, absolutely. Yeah. Ego first. Did, did you have other people in mind for the different parts in it? Like, well, we in did... my dream... Because you guys, nobody knew who you were at the time, right? No. You no. both worked, but you weren't, We you were, know... like, hustling around Hollywood, doing little parts and that kind of thing. And so we thought it was easier for us to write it doing imitations of famous actors that we imagined might one day be in the movie. And then we would record these improvisations and write down the stuff. Like, who would you improvise as? Well, I do remember that for a while we had De Niro and Morgan Freeman in the movie. You know what I mean? All right. So Which, just shoot, shoot right for the top we there. We were pretty sure that, you know, that was probably going to happen. At least mm -hmm. one of the two. Well, who did De Niro play? De Niro was uh, the, the um, Robin Williams character, and, okay, and the, the, uh, Morgan the Freeman was playing the Stellan Skarsgård, yeah, the mm -hmm. more successful mathematician character. And, and did, you, you know, did, you do, did you do the De Niro? I, did, I do, do a terrible De Niro. De Niro. I just do the face. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I do a pretty good De Niro. I know some of those lines. You do? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to hear me do some of... I, I would love to. Would you to. like to hear me do some De Niro as Robin Williams? <laughs> All right. This is when... This is when uh, Matt Damon's character is Will's is, is, is breaking down over okay. these numbers, right? Okay, yeah. It's not your fault, see? Meh. I'm Bobby De Niro, see? It's not your fault. Meh. Great. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. Do I have those lines right? Oh, thank you. <laughs> do I have those lines? It's not your fault? Isn't Basically that Basically nailed it's it. not your yeah. fault? You didn't do it? I wouldn't, like that? yeah, nitpick. You wouldn't it nitpick? Great. That's yeah, your no, script. It's... You should probably nitpick. <laughs> well, wonderful now, stuff. Now, the person who made that film for you, the person who started your career with, right. was Harvey Weinstein. Now, the... It's a you know, comedy I show, correct? This is a comedy <laughs> yeah. show right now. But we also talk about the subject of sure, the moment, what sure. the national conversation about. Absolutely. And, and after the revelations, the disturbing and just truly uh, horrifying revelations about what Harvey Weinstein did, did you feel, because you had such a close association with him at the beginning of your career, that you had to do more than simply distance yourself from Harvey Weinstein? Because everybody ran for the exits. Uh, yes, and understandably so. You know, for me, it was a little bit... I mean, it was awful to see the extent of these terrible crimes, and it was hideous. And I haven't worked for Harvey for f more than 15 years, but nonetheless, I had felt this attachment to I, movies like Good Hunting and Shakespeare in Love and Chasing Amy and some of the early movies that I really loved doing when I still was, you know, totally brand new. And, I, and, and so it sort of tainted that a little bit to realize while we were having these experiences and making these movies, there were people who were suffering and dealing with awful experiences. So I, I didn't really know what to do with that. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to know, but I, I decided to give back the residuals that I'm getting from the Miramax movies and give them to Rain and uh, Film Independent, who you can also uh, donate to. Uh, just because I didn't want to sort of cash a check from the guy, and I thought, well, maybe, you know, here, you know, I can still feel okay about it if it's going to a good cause. Well, a after that, there have been multiple accusations and revelations about various people, especially in Hollywood, has been focused for the most part up until recently. And you yourself have been accused of a few things, sexual impropriety, that you've, you've apologized for some of that. And do, do you feel like there is more that uh, you or all men, especially in Hollywood, have to do to make sure that this isn't... Uh, a passing thing where women I are listening so. to... I think so. I think we have to... I mean, what I was accused of uh, by a, a, a woman was of touching her breast while I gave her a hug. I don't remember it, but I absolutely apologize for it. I certainly don't think she's lying or making it up. Um, this is just the kind of thing that we have to... Uh, as men, I think, in this 
in, as we become more aware of this, be really, really mindful of our behavior and hold ourselves accountable and say, if I was ever part of the problem, I want to change, I want to be part of the solution, and to not shy away from you know, these uncomfortable or awkward or strange encounters that we might have had where we were sort of navigating and not knowing. I just did an interview you know, where somebody asked me a question and I kind of, you know, it was, a, it was a serious question and I kind of felt uncomfortable and didn't know what to say and laughed awkwardly. It's just a tricky thing to try to handle. I think the most important thing to do is to support the voices that are coming forward, believe them, and create a business where more uh, uh, women are empowered and in place so that this, less of this happens and so that there is a way of reporting this stuff that people can um, feel safe doing, you know? I, I completely agree. And it also might be nice if we had like a Justice League out there. That would be nice. Thank, bring little, thankfully, bring, that bring would... a little justice down <laughs> yes. on top of the people who would be um, nice to have a justice run away things. from the accusations. Yeah. Because eventually everything comes out. I think so. I mean, I, it is, certainly is now. You know, I mean, it didn't, clearly it didn't before. I thought I had a sense of, of the scope of the problem, and I thought I understood it. And, I, and I, you know, the truth is I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand what it was like to be, to be groped, to be harassed, to be interrupted, talked over, paid less, mm -hmm. you know, pushed around, uh, belittled, all the things that women deal with that, that as, for me as a man, I had the privilege of not not having to deal with. And part of this for me has been listening to people I really care about and love as they tell me stories of stuff that's happened to them. This is men and women. And, and you know, recognizing that it's a real thing. I'm not a spokesman, I'm not a superhero. I can't change it by myself. I can just be accountable mm -hmm. for myself and for my actions. I think all men especially need to examine their own conscience to um, uh, be aware of what they may have done in the past and how in the future they can uh, treat women with greater respect, and um, it starts with believing the people who make the accusations. Absolutely. Um, well, so nice to Thanks have you here. Much. Thanks for being here. Justice League is in theaters tomorrow. Ben Affleck, everybody. We'll be right back with Greta Gerwig.